like a boost you know what i mean i'm just like a couple of minutes it's like whoop. <laughs> hey guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video so today i thought i would share with you guys my current skincare routine and also some products that i use now and then because <laughs> it's not everything you use every day anyway i want to preface this by saying this is by no means any medical information if you have any real trouble with your skin go see a professional go see a dermatologist and you know i have done some reading on my own i uh, tried to figure out what products are going to work for me but i'm by no means a professional that being said i just love how much the skincare community has grown ever since 2020 i feel like in the last couple of years it's just grown astronomically and I have had several phases throughout the panorama where I was just like so obsessed with skincare. I was like consuming so much skincare content and I was, you know, buying new stuff, trying out new stuff. And I feel like I have a pretty good routine right now. It's, it's obviously not going to be perfect. My skin also isn't perfect. I'm wearing makeup, quite obvious right now. My skin does not look like this without makeup, but yeah. Before we get into it, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up if you like it and go check out my TikTok and Instagram for more fun content. Now let's get into it. So first of all, my skin type is combination and also quite sensitive. So I have a relatively like oily T-zone and quite normal cheeks, basically. I tend to get quite a bit of breakouts, not necessarily acne, but not like deep set stuff. It's kind of up and down. There is no particular cycle to it. It's more like week to week sort of basis. I guess depending on the weather, my stress levels, everything like that. So what I try to achieve with my skincare routine is to give my skin enough hydration without giving it excessive moisture, like excessive amounts of thick moisturizers and oils and stuff. I try to focus on hydrating toners and serums. And also I try to choose ingredients that help against redness because I have quite redness prone skin flares up quite quickly and also to calm down any breakouts and right now it's winter here so it's really cold quite dry um i'm using a thicker moisturizer now than i would in summer but i'm going to show you the one i use in summer but apart from the moisturizer the rest of the routine is quite similar but i'll tell you if i think of something that i do differently in summer or if i'm just feeling really oily or something like that so uh, the first thing i do in the morning is cleanse my skin and depending on how i'm feeling after the night if i'm feeling really oily and greasy and really like a lot of residue on my face from the night before or if I'm feeling quite dry and tight I will use something different according to that. The first one is the COSRX low pH good morning cleanser. So this is basically just a nice gel cleanser that feels really refreshing and doesn't leave my skin feel stripped and dry but it cleanses it properly and this is something I like to use in the morning particularly. Maybe unconsciously because it's called good morning but more because it feels so fresh and I really feel like I'm getting rid of whew, like a boost you know what i mean this is also relatively affordable um and quite widely available Cosrx. this has some various botanical ingredients and it does have a little bit of fragrance i don't like fragrance in my skincare a lot in cleansers i don't mind it that much but i also don't reach for it but this doesn't really smell very fragranced and i haven't had any problems with reactions to this but do keep that in mind it does have perfume in it. I also like to use the CeraVe Foaming Cleanser. This is a bit more stripping and a bit more deep cleaning than the Cosrx one, but they're kind of similar. I feel like I use those kind of interchangeable. This is what I found to be the best CeraVe cleanser for combination oily skin. I have tried the salicylic acid one. Didn't really like it. It was fine. It didn't really feel like a cleanser. I don't know if that makes sense. And I also prefer to just exfoliate my skin in a separate step. This is just a basic foaming cleanser. I uh, wouldn't necessarily use this if you have really dry skin, it is a bit stripping, not not excessively so, but a little bit, but it does clean my skin really well. And for days when my skin is feeling particularly dry, particularly tight, I will use the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser, and this is more for dry to normal skin, but it, it cleanses quite nicely, it feels more like a moisturizer, it's obviously not a moisturizer, but the texture is a bit more like a moisturizer. Also quite basic, but really good cleanser, so yeah, I really like to just change between the CeraVe ones, um, depending on how I'm feeling, how my skin is doing that day. Now, in the morning, I focus on adding a lot of hydration in several steps to my skin and also use soothing ingredients um, that is gonna, you know, help keep my skin in check throughout the day. And these next things I'm gonna tell you, like, you don't have to do all of this. You don't need this many products. You can have more products. I don't know which product specifically has done the absolute most for my skin, but I like to have kind of like a full-on skincare routine. So this is just what I do. Mm -hmm. 
The first thing I used is the Green Tea Fresh Toner from Isentry. Green tea is an ingredient that is used a lot against breakouts and to calm redness. Um, to what degree it actually does that, I'm not entirely sure, but it feels really nice. This is also fragrance free. And what I do with toners in general is just that I take some in my hands and I will pat it in. I don't use cotton rounds for toners in particular because they suck up a lot of the product instead of it actually landing on your skin. And you get just as good application with, you know, patting it on. And I try to keep my skin damp between the steps because we're gonna get to hyaluronic acid and then we need our skin to be wet. So next up I use the Centella Unscented Toner from Purito. I really love the Centella and Scented line from Purito. They also do the same line in a scented version. This has, it has the toner, it has a serum, which is good, but it's not, it's quite similar to this. So I haven't bought it like, I bought it once, but not again, because you know, it was a bit expensive. And it's basically this in a more concentrated form. And they also have a recovery cream. So kind of like a bit of a thicker cream with a lot of Centella in it. So this has Centella extract and Panthenol, which are both really good for soothing irritation and redness. And also this is a very hydrating toner. Next up i go in with the ordinary hyaluronic acid and b5 serum and when you use hyaluronic acid especially if it's in the serum alone you want to make sure your skin is damp when you do it because hyaluronic acid draws moisture from the surroundings so either the air or the surface of your skin and also that's why hyaluronic acid is more effective if you live in more of a humid area because there's just more for it to draw on so if you're living in a very very dry area it might not be the best option but I haven't had any problems with it and it's not particularly humid here either. And hyaluronic acid is kind of like an instant plumper. It's not a long-term effect, but hyaluronic acid is one of those things that is present in our skin naturally. And what you do is kind of add on to that effect of the plumping uh, when you add it in a skincare routine. And hyaluronic acid is also what you get if you get filler in the lips or under the eyes or the nose or wherever. That's also hyaluronic acid. And that's why it goes out after six months or whatever it is. Um, so it's used for a lot of things, but yeah, this is the serum I use. There are a lot of hyaluronic acid serums and products on the market. Most products also contain hyaluronic acid, so you don't necessarily need designated serum. I just like this one. There are tons because people were obsessed with it back in 2020. <laughs> so yeah. I also like to use the Ordinary Niacinamide and Zinc. Niacinamide has many known benefits for a lot of things, but the main reason I use it is to combat breakouts, which is one of its main benefits. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I started using these two snail mucin products from COSRX, and I use the cream morning and night, and the essence only in the evenings. So I'll talk about that later. So this is the cream, and it has 92% snail secretion filtrate. And I have heard a lot about a lot of good things about these products, that this particular ingredient could help really problematic skin. And I really like to give ingredients like this a go, and I don't go into it expecting some sort of miracle, Mostly I'm like, if it doesn't work, it's at least going to just be hydrating and nice. It's not going to do anything bad or anything like that. But yeah, I'm two, two weeks into using them. I'm not noticing any major differences, but my skin feels plump and nice. So these are probably something that I will keep in my routine, but I'll see after a month or so how I feel like they have, if they have done something major for my skin or not, if I will, you know, continue to use them all the time, maybe sometimes, maybe just one of the products or something like that. This is a cream but it's quite lightweight. So if you have really oily skin or it's the summertime, you might be good just using this cream. Now it's winter here and I can't get away with just using this because I will get quite dry. So I will use that first. And then after I will use either one of these CeraVe lotion or cream. Now in the winter, I tend to use the cream more, um, but it kind of depends. Yeah, both of these say from dry to very dry skin, but I do find that the CeraVe creams sink so nicely into the skin. And I was shocked by this one in particular, the cream. Because I was kind of expecting it to be laying around in a thick layer and not never going in and stuff. But it draws in quite quickly. And this one even more so. Like a couple of minutes. It's like whoop. <laughs> so yeah. And I use those same moisturizers in the evening. Usually the cream. But it kind of depends then too. So right now it's winter in Norway. It is no sun when i tell you the uv index is zero and i'm at the moment not using sunscreen also because i just go out for like 10 minutes in the sun each day before it goes down but in spring summer and early autumn i use this sunscreen it's my favorite at the moment this is from skinceuticals and it's the advanced brightening uv defense sunscreen with spf 50 but yeah this is not it's a bit pricey it's not crazy but um you know it's not a drugstore either i do feel like i like to invest a bit in my sunscreen though because it's so important it's the best age defense you have you can do as much retinol as you want to but if you don't use sunscreen when exposed to uv rays you will get some damage so yeah and you can check the uv in 
index where you live online. There are several weather websites that do this. So, you know, the Earth is curved and the longer you get towards the poles, the more the sun is going to come in at an angle. And that's also affecting the UV value, not just how much the sun is shining, but also at what angle. So now, not only is it only shining for like, I don't even know, five hours a day here, it's also very angled. So the amount of direct UV rays you get on yourself is very minimal. And also many days it's just cloudy and stuff like that too. So yeah, definitely take into account where you live because I hear a lot of people say, always oh, sunscreen every single day of the year. Even health professionals here say you don't need to use it every single day in, in the winter because there is just no UV exposure, you know. The only exception if you're going out on snow because snow is so reflective and it will reflect back on you. So that's something to take into account. But if you're just walking around the city, don't worry about it. So do you need an eye cream? Not necessarily, but a lot of eye creams are really nice. If you want to splurge on an eye cream, you know, do it. Uh, they're really nice. I use this one from La Roche-Posay. It's quite empty at the moment. And this is the Tolerane Ultra Eye Cream. This is a very simple formula. It's formulated for especially sensitive skin. And I just feel like this is the perfect mix between hydrating and moisturizing for the eye area. I used to struggle a bit with flaky eyelids. I had a lot of dry skin around my eyes. I have used this. I got recommended this from a dermatologist like four or five years back. And I've used it ever since. I haven't ever had flaky eyelids. But yeah, you can use a normal moisturizer with eye cream. You don't need a separate one but a lot of eye creams are nice. So it's definitely a luxury, but they are nice. <laughs> and I used the Sika Plus Lip Balm from La Roche-Posay. This is also one of my longest standing skincare products. This also has panthenol and lipids in it. It's so good. It's one of the only ones I don't feel like I have to apply every five minutes. You know, with a lot of them, you get some sort of layer on, but it still doesn't feel moisturizing. This really feels moisturizing. Okay, let's talk evening next. And the first thing I always do in the evening is doing a double cleanse. Even more so important if you're wearing makeup and or sunscreen, but I tend to do it anyway because I do feel like I always get a bit of grease throughout the day, a bit of pollution, everything like that. I just like to go in with an oil as well. If I'm wearing makeup, I first do two steps to remove eye makeup because I really I know you can remove eye makeup with a cleansing balm and similar stuff, but it's really, you always get something in your eyes and it's really like messy and stuff. So uh, I just use micellar water. This is the one from CeraVe. I also have a favorite from La Roche-Posay. I will put that up here. And I just take it on two cotton rounds and I kind of hold it on my eyes. And a tip for removing really hard eye makeup is to hold it there for a few seconds, not to start rubbing right away. That's really uh, not that great for your the skin around your eyes but just hold it for a while and then gently sort of go back and forth and if you have really stubborn waterproof stuff which usually for me is my eyebrows and sometimes mascara i use this room from nivea um uh, this is their dual face eye makeup remover so this has one oil-based face and one water-based face and when you shake it it mixes for a short while and then it's going to separate. These are so great and there are a lot of brands that do this. I have one from La Roche-Posay I like. I know Lancome does one. A lot of them do this, um, but this is quite cheap in comparison to the La Roche-Posay one, for example, and quite good for sensitive skin and stuff, so I just use that. But look for the dual face ones. Those are the ones that are definitely the best at waterproof stubborn stuff. My favorite cleansing oil is the From Green Cleansing Oil from Purito. This is fragrance free. It is quite basic, but it's so good. And I really feel like my skin gets a deep clean. I always get out some gunk and stuff with this and it dissolves makeup beautifully. Uh, I have never had any face product that hasn't gone off with this. You just, you know, on dry skin, work that in, rinse it off with water and then go over to your uh, water-based cleanser, which I showed you my my options for that earlier. This is a new addition to my collection and this is the Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm from Vanilla Co. Yeah, I just wanted a cleansing balm also because they are a lot easier to travel with <laughs> than an oil. It's gonna leak and go everywhere and it's just really messy. So this is great to travel with. I've gotten this so many times as a tester in my K-Beauty orders and stuff. And I was like, okay, we're gonna get it. The only thing I don't like about it is the fragrance. It is a bit strongly fragranced. They also do many different types targeted at different skin concerns. So they have like a purifying one and soothing one and different ones, but all of them have a fragrance. So I would love it if they released the fragrance free version, uh, but it doesn't bother me. It hasn't bothered my skin. I just don't like it. It kind of has, yeah, it has like a basic sort of um, sweet scent. It's not overpowering, but I also don't, 
wouldn't choose it if I made the product myself, but I've heard so much good about the formula, so I was like, we'll try it, and I haven't had any problems with sensitivity, so uh, I think the fragrance in this cleansing balm is fine for me. So I alternate between two actives. I do one evening, I do exfoliation, next evening I do retinol, and then that goes on. For my exfoliant, I use the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. It is, in my opinion, the best formulated BHA product on the market. It is so simple. It's a BHA. It doesn't do anything else. It's BHA. Um, it has some additional green tea in it, but that's it. It's just so simple and so good. I have never had any sensitivity issues with this. It is so good for my skin. So BHAs are used if you want your exfoliant to penetrate deeper into your skin and dissolve all of that oil and gunk that's in your pores because BHA can dissolve oil, which AHAs cannot. So AHAs are more for the surface of your skin, removing that surface layer, removing that skin. BHS also does that, but more, more so they go deeper into the skin. Like I said earlier with the CeraVe Salicylic Acid Cleanser, that's another option if you don't want to use a separate exfoliator, if you want it in some product you have from before. There are also a lot of other cleansers that contain salicylic acid now. You can get serums, you can get creams, different products that incorporate salicylic acid now. And you would definitely want to do a patch test and uh, build up your tolerance with active ingredients like this. The other nights I use the Paula's Choice 1% Retinol Booster. This is a product that is made to be used either alone or mixed with other products. And additional ingredients in this are vitamin A and licorice. So retinoids are one of the only skincare ingredients that are medically proven to be effective and also used in a lot of different treatments in dermatology. I also at one point used Differin, which is another prescription retinol product on my arms where I have keratosis pilaris or chicken skin as I call it. It speeds up your skin's renewal process and is really good in fighting stuff like breakouts and also wrinkles, fine lines. I am not a dermatologist so I'm not going to go into great depth of what retinol can do for you but I would definitely recommend reading about it because it's very interesting. So the BHA I would use right after cleansing because it is a toner sort of product whereas the retinol I would use after toners, essence, serum um, and but before face creams. The toner I have been using in the evenings recently is the licorice toner from Aquel. Again, licorice is one of those ingredients. It's quite interesting. There are a lot of things that could work with it. And you know, it could potentially do a lot of things, but there aren't really a lot of scientific backing in terms of what it can do. So I just thought it was cool to try. Uh, again, I got this in a sample once, like a uh, sample size 20 mil sort of a thing. I thought it was nice. So I was like, why not? Has it been revolutionary? No, is it a good toner? Yes. So this is the essence from Cosarex I'm using at the moment. It's the Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. So it's an essence with 96% snail mucin. I use this in conjunction with the cream, like I said. This is quite new to me. I only started using them a couple of weeks ago, but it's so hydrating. It feels so nice on the skin. Like you can see in the bottle here, it's quite thick. It's not a really runny essence, it's more towards a serum sort of texture. But yeah, so far I'm really liking it. It feels really nice on my skin. I feel like it's really deeply hydrating and stuff like that. Um, but I can't say anything if it's been like a revolution for me. I don't know yet. I'm gonna have to use this product for a bit longer to tell you the final verdict on that, but yeah. And then I would use the snail cream on top of that and then a moisturizer. So either the moisturizing cream or lotion from CeraVe. Lastly, I'm going to show you some products I use now and then. These are my two, the two masks that I rotate between. So the first mask I like to use is the Real Mugwort Clay Mask from Isentry. This is a really nice clay mask, but it's not too drying. So this is formulated for strong sebum care, exfoliating rough skin and refreshing exhausted skin. And I really feel like it does that. It is a clay mask, so it's going to be quite good for oily skin and removing excess sebum, but also it has mugwort, which feels really refreshing and it's also quite good for anti-redness. The key with clay masks is just don't leave them on for too long because they do get quite tight and you don't want to have to like proper scrub it off. You want to be able to gently wipe it off with, with like a wet cloth or something. I am a big fan of the mugwort line from I'm From and I used to use the Mugworth Essence all the time. Now I'm using the snail one. I decided to try that instead, but I do actually have an unopened Mugworth Essence lying in a drawer uh, that I'll probably use after the snail one again. Yeah, Mugworth is also one of those ingredients that you don't have necessarily any scientific backing, but they do feel quite nice and I do feel like they work against the redness in my skin, in my personal opinion. This is a mask. It has kind of a gel-like consistency. This is just 
such a refreshing mask it is so hydrating so cooling it feels a bit cool on the skin even though it doesn't have mint or anything like that that's usually used as like the cooling ingredients um i think i use way too much because i saw someone do it in like a blog post about k-beauty and they were using like the tiniest amount and i'm just like but that's okay because self-care you know <laughs> but yeah i love that mask and the essence is also really good they also have a sheath mask i'm not the biggest fan of sheath masks because i feel like they are they always sit quite weirdly, it's a necessary waste. But sometimes it's nice, sometimes I'll, you know, add an extra sheet mask in the basket. And they do do a mugwort sheet mask that's also quite nice. The last product I wanted to talk about is the cream that I like to use in summer. So my favorite gel cream, and this is the vitamin tree water gel from I'm From. This is so nice because I have tried a lot of gel moisturizers that just don't give my skin what it needs. Because even in summer, I need something that kind of stays throughout the day and doesn't get dry. But it needs to be, when it's really hot and humid outside, it needs to be more hydrating than moisturizing. But it also needs to have some ingredients that would allow the skin to actually hold on to that hydration and not just evaporate right away. So it's a gel like this. It's fragrance free. Really nice. I love this. So that was my current skincare routine and skincare phase, you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, anything you would like me to answer about this, because uh, I didn't go extremely in-depth in every single product, you can feel free to ask down below or send me a message. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, and go check out my TikTok and Instagram for more fun content. And I will see you very soon. Bye!